Hello and welcome to this webinar. Today I'm going to go over BIM quantity takeoff and connecting the quantities to an Excel bill. First of all, I'll be taking you through creating a new project. So I'll give it a name, BIM webinar quantity takeoff in this case, and then I'll select whether I want to use SMM7 or NRM2. And finally, whether I want to measure in metric or imperial, since I live in London, I'll choose metric. Once the project's loaded up, you'll see on the left hand side we have all our building elements, columns, walls, beams and so on, and then our element list. This is where you create new elements. Now up top we have various sections. Since we will be working with BIM, we'll mostly be focused on the BIM model. However, if you want to focus on 2D to 3D, then you can head over to identify or watch our other webinars on that. We work with both IFC and Revit. To work with IFC, you simply click import IFC file and it will be the same process for Revit, but you click import Revit file. And of course, if you uh, have uh, changes in a model, so Revit changes, then um, um, do the same thing. Revit changes, bring it in, and I'll show you how, uh, um, and I'll show you how you do this. So choose your uh, Revit model. Uh, I will be choosing the structural model in this example. And um, I'll take you through the process of uh, quantifying it. So once the software um, realizes that yes, you're working with a Revit model, you bring it in, you wait for it to move to the next process and you simply have to say, what is your uh, reference floor? So in this one, it's entry level one, click next to confirm. And now our approach is radically different to most um, uh, methods available. We're now, we've extracted the data from the uh, Revit file, categorized it, and what we're saying to the software is, in the Revit file, this over here is a rectangular beam. Is it seen as a beam in our software? Yes, it is. If it, if it isn't, let's say if it was recognized as a column or some other um, entity, then you can just change it. It's usually not the case, but you have the option. Uh, of course, you can change the material as well. So you can change the material from in situ concrete to precast concrete also. Uh, doing so will affect the advanced measures which we'll be able to generate. So simply just repeat the process to all, uh, all of the building elements. Just make sure what is being imported and how it's being perceived in our software. Um, and then just uh, confirm it. Um, next, you also have the option to say, um, I'm, I don't want the roof to be included. I only want certain floors. I only want certain floors to be... Um, I only want to quantify certain floors or just bring them in so you can just check or uncheck them here. One thing to mention here is when we bring in a soft, when we bring in the model, then uh, we are not just bringing the model. If, for instance, it's concrete, then what we are able to do is uh, for concrete, we add advanced measures such as concrete volume, rebar, formwork, overheight formwork, and so on. For steelwork, we add tonnages, volume. So these are some of the advanced measures which we add. Um, I'll just show you what the uh, structural model looks like now. Now that we have the structural model, it has been imported. What we can do is... Uh, we can interrogate it further to uh, to show you. Uh, for instance, um, I've just zoned into the columns. You can see in this model there are two different types of ones, 450 by 750. Uh, we have our list of attributes uh, down at the bottom here where um, the steel ratio is what's used to calculate the weight of rebar, which you'll see later on. So if you know exactly what it is, you can change it from 150 to something else. And of course, you can batch select all of them. 
so you can just uh, be much more automated in this approach so if I was to calculate this now um, I can just select which floors I want to calculate click OK and now this is running in pass SMM7 rules so uh, all the SMM7 rules it's measuring to them if for instance I would like uh, I would like certain tweaks to be made I have I've always got the flexibility to delve deeper and change them further uh, of course that's beyond the scope of this uh, webinar so I won't delve too deep but there is a possibility for you to do that um, just very quickly to show you of what quantities we have generated so as you can see for the columns we have um, uh, separated by floor, material, concrete grade, entity type um, and so on. We can change the classification to either add or remove items and prioritize them further as well. So as you can see if I wanted the name to take priority then I would simply just check that and now you know that it, everything's been split by uh, name first and those settings can be either imported or exported. You can see the subtotals uh, of the project also so you can just get a more finite detail as to where the quantities are coming from. Furthermore we also have a reverse check model which I'll just show you shortly but over here it's um, uh, showing the the subtotals of this uh, 450 column so now now that I've reverse checked it um, I get a list which I can work through I can click on the element which um, I'm interested in and it takes you directly to it the element is highlighted in blue so you know what it is that you are looking at and the, pro the properties are displayed at the bottom as well so if you want to make any changes or tweaks you can do that more on that later um, now that um, we know that yes we've generated quantities what next well you can bring in your cost document or um, your excel file which can be anything here we try and identify the excel so you can say yep yeah, uh, whether or not you're happy with the columns so if you are you can identify them if for instance there is um, uh, there is data in the column um, in the Excel file you don't need you can just clear the field so in this one I'm just deselecting the quantities because I don't want it to come through now I'm able to identify the rows fully identify now that I'm happy we can we have a mini Excel within the software just to help you with the dragging and dropping of just saying hey there are certain quantities which I need um, um, I'll just show you over here and then like this you can build up your uh, cost document for instance I'm in the column section um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna grab the, grab the total volume and just uh, drop it on the columns what you see is um, now we know that this item has been associated just to make it simpler for you to see okay what have you associated what you haven't and just filter through it so you can just do this with other building elements and then just work through it really just continue to do that Um, another thing to note is if you use an item more than once then what happens is uh, it's it gets colorized differently so it just changes to purple just to visualize that further so what we can do now is uh, now that we have some data we can save this as a baseline to say yes this is my first revision no changes have been made yet however if changes occur how do I know well this is the beauty of it, once you've linked the uh, quantities to a cost document uh, in, this sense, in this sense the excel file um, then you have this three level check where you can go back and say hey this is uh, are there any anomalies yes okay this is where the quantities are coming from and this is how much of it there is so you can go to it you can say I 
uh, I want to know how many of these there are. Okay, brilliant. If, for instance, let's say there's a de design revision that the radius is no longer 225 for all of the 450s and it changes to something like 250, so the diameter is 500, then, oh, change the radius to 500, and then uh, what we'll see is um, we'll see how this impacts the quantities. Well, just for visualization, we can take this a step further just to colorize them uh, differently as well. So when we have a look at the model, we'll know, yes, they have been altered, they have been changed, and then just rerun the quantities and uh, you'll be able to see how it impacts the, um, uh, the baseline to see if there's any deviation. As you can see, originally my... Um, the baseline was 121. It's now changed to 149.